Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a custom version of Craft Bucket to allow you to move bedrock and obsidian with pistons and sticky pistons. As you can see, works perfectly with bedrock and obsidian. Let's dive in. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have the Java JDK installed on your computer. Now if you don't know if you have it installed on your computer, you probably don't. This is the Java development kit to allow you to compile Java applications on your computer. All the links for everything I'm about to show you will be in the description so you don't have to worry about reading it from here. Go to this website right here. This is the Java Standard Edition Downloads page. The URL again will be in the description. I download the newest Java JDK. So right here it's JDK 7 update number 10. So if you go ahead and just hit that download and then you have to accept this license agreement which you probably should read, which is right here, but you know how those work. <laughs> and then go ahead and download the file for the platform that you're on. So if you're on Windows 7, any Windows, x86 or x64, go ahead and download one of these. I download the Windows x64 because I have a 64-bit processor. And I'll go ahead and ask you to download. I've already downloaded it. But once you download it, it will be in your downloads directory. And all you need to do is run it and just keep clicking next, and it'll install it perfectly for you. The next thing we need to download and install is Maven. Downloading Maven will allow you to build CraftBucket. What it basically does behind the scenes is download all the dependencies CraftBucket needs in order to be able to build. The link to the download page will be in the description. It's right here. Now, as of right now, it's Maven 3.0.4. And what we're going to download is the binary zip. So if you click on it right here, and all you need to do is click on any one of these. These are all the same thing. And it'll ask to download it. Let's download that right now. In your downloads folder, you'll see the Apache Maven. What you're going to want to do is right click on the file. You will probably have something that says extract here or something else. I use 7-zip. It's another zip program, kind of like WinRAR and all that. I'll put a link to it in the description. It's free and awesome. So all you need to do is extract, and I'll put a new folder right there with the same name, minus dot zip. Now what you're going to want to do is go to your control panel. So go to the start menu and hit control panel. Then you're going to go to System, Advanced System Settings, Environment Variables, and then we're going to be making two environment variables. As you can see, I've already made them, but I will show you exactly what to make. You're going to want to hit the New button right here and create a new variable. Variable name is going to be M2. And the variable value, we want to find right where we downloaded the Maven package, so we'll go back to our Downloads folder. We're going to double click on the folder one more time, double click on the bin directory and then click up here and copy and paste that path right there because that's what we're going to put in for our variable value. Paste that right in there, hit OK. I've already done that. And then down here, the system variables, we're going to create one more. It's going to be called m2 underscore home. Now you can copy and paste the exact same value in there except for all you need to do is get rid of the bin and that backslash and then hit OK. Hit OK again. If apply is lit up, just go ahead and hit apply and then OK. We can close out the control panel. The next thing we want to do is go to the start menu and type CMD. I know you can't see that because this is on my other monitor. But if you type CMD and hit enter, a command prompt will come up. Be something like this. What you need to do to test Maven is MVN space dash dash version. And if something like that comes up, you're great. If something like MVN version is not recognized as an internal command, uh, go ahead and post in the comments and I'll try and help you out. Now that that's set up, we need to download the main attraction to this video, Craft Bucket. The link will be in the description again, but it's on GitHub. And Craft Bucket, what we need to do is hit this zip button right here, and that'll create a zip of the source files. So we just need to save that, and it'll be in our downloads folder. Let's go back to our downloads. We're going to right click on the zip file, unzip it again. Now it'll be Craft Bucket Master. We double click on there. And now here's where we're going to edit the source code so we can enable Bedrock and Obsidian to be moved by the piston. We're going to go into the Source folder, Main, Java, Net, Minecraft, Server, and then we need to find a file called Block Piston, and it's right here. If you double click on that, it will open in your text editor. I use Notepad++. It's the best Notepad replacement. What we need to do is basically find the code that enables or disables the ability to be pushed by a piston. 
So I've actually found that and the method is called public static boolean A and it's towards the bottom. In this file it is on line 246. As you can see right here if it says block obsidian.id it'll return false. And we're going to make this true. Now what we want to do here is add another case for bedrock. So what we need to do is space and then if you hold shift and hit the backslash it'll put a straight line. We want to do two of those and in Java that means or. Now what we want to type is I then two equals signs equals equals block dot bedrock dot ID and what that basically does is this is going to be the ID of the block that's passed in and A basically means hey can we push it with a piston so it's going to check if the block ID equals obsidian or if it equals bedrock we're just going to return true and that means yes we can push it so that's all the code we actually have to change go ahead and save the file we can close out of this now I'm just going to minimize it now comes the fun part just go back into the main craft bucket folder right here where you see source and all this stuff now if you're in Windows 7 you can do this you hold shift and then right click anywhere not on a file but anywhere else in the file and you'll see this thing that says open command window here go ahead and click that it's going to open up a command window in that directory now this is how we build it we're going to type mvn for maven and then we're going to type clean install and hit enter now the first time you do this it's going to take a long time and has to download all the dependencies from the repository but I'm going to let this go and we'll see what happens you might see some warning messages or something like that as we just saw up here if I go up warning we have a duplicate but that's fine don't worry about that so now that it says build success and it shows the finish time and everything we can just close this window now the file that we just built is going to be under target it's going to be craft bucket and then the version number dash snapshot dot jar so what we want to do is right click on it and hit copy and we're going to move it to where we want our server to be running so in my case it's going to be under games minecraft and servers and just paste that right in there now we're going to right click on it one more time and hit rename just rename it to craft bucket and re leave the dot jar on there so next thing we're going to do is create a new bat file to be able to launch our server so what we're going to do is right click and hit new text document and call it run in all caps dot bat get rid of the dot text and put bat and then go ahead and hit yes if that pops up now right click and we're going to hit edit. It will show up in notepad. Now we're going to write two lines. The first thing is going to be the command to launch the server. I'm going to put the command in the description so you don't have to watch this video and find it out. But it's going to be, I'm just going to copy and paste it here. This is right from the buckets website. Um, what these two things right here do is specify how much memory you want to allocate to the server. And then it just runs the jar file. The next thing we're just going to put a pause at the end and that's just so it doesn't close right when we stop the server. And then go ahead and save, close that. Now we can run the file, double click on run, and as you can see here, it's starting the server, it builds all the files. Before I go play this, I'm going to close the server one more time. I'm going to add my name to the OP list. Save that close it. Hit run.bat one more time. The server is running. It's preparing the spawn area. Now we go to the game. Go to the multiplayer. Go into my server. You can connect to 127.0.0.1 and that will join your local server that's running on your computer. So hit join server. Alright, it'll spawn. I've already gone in, added, uh, turned my game mode to creative. If not, the command is uh, slash game mode and then one and then your username so mine was regali and add but my game mode's already one so what we need is a piston I'm gonna say a sticky piston actually some redstone a lever and let's get some bedrock I'll just do this right here Nah, let's just find somewhere big and open I know this is all big and open, but I meant flat. Oh, don't know what was going on there. Uh, let's put our bedrock down. 
put our little sticky piston behind it and run some redstone. Don't know what happened there. Put our lever down. Boom. And now you have a working craft bucket server that allows you to move bedrock and obsidian with a piston. Thanks for watching guys. Hit the like button if you enjoy it. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial.